Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name, Adam Lewis. You're watching Adam Lewis TV. AMC squeeze, baby. AMC short squeeze. This stock, you know it and I know it. It's, it's about to pop like pop rocks. I want to show you yet another video from Al from Boston. He's given me permission to share this with you. And, and in doing so, I hope to get this message out to so many people, out to everybody, really. So if you can help me do that, if you're an ape, part of the ape family, AMC apes, please share this video, like the video, that way it'll get in front of more people uh, with YouTube. But if you share the video on your social networks, it's gonna spread the word. You need to know about this. Now what Al does and his partner, he, they go over they, they formulate citadels and the hedge funds. All these people that are against us, it's a war. And what he does is breaks it down military style, which is very interesting. He's going to show you who all the players are. There's 300 and almost 400 players against us. Big money, billionaire players. He's going to break and show you every one of them, who they are, what they have invested, what they plan to do, who's going to orchestrate all this, how's it going to go down, how the FUD's going to come down our way, media, social media, television, radio, family, whoever. It could come at you in every different way, and he's going to break it down for you. So let's go right to the video. AMC stock and the AMC short squeeze is going to be phenomenal. Let's get right to it. Hey, it's Al from Boston. How you doing? Uh, it is 11.17, 2.12, and I am making another AMC update video. This is going to be one of my most important videos. Watch all of it. Watch every minute of it. Watch to the very end. If you don't have time to start on it and, and, and you have to quit in the middle of it, I would advise you just to pick a time where you can watch the whole thing, hear it all the way through, and, uh, and, and go from there, okay? So very first slide, this is uh, Masada. This is located in Israel. Why is this important to us? I'm going to tell you at the end of the... Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the actual presentation, but this is going to be uh, a very interesting case study that I want you to remember because you're gonna walk away with it, with not just the squeeze the rest of your life. All right, let's talk about sell-offs. Citadel's strategic sell-offs, okay? I've broken this down into a military format, make it really easy and digestible for everybody. I've included uh, some scenarios, some things that are gonna happen that are part of my general thesis of how this thing will roll out and what the enemy is going to do. And I'm going to refer to the hedge funds, the short hedge funds as the enemy, as there's too many of them to even bother naming. So I'm gonna give you a forecast, a salute report, a sit rep and an MP COA, uh, basically a situation report and an enemy's most probable course of action. This has been war games between me and a couple of my Marine Corps buddies. Um, as I'm sure most of you know, I come from a military background and I am a huge fan of logical reasoning. Uh, thinking things through and, and, and basically just figuring out what my enemy is going to do. I like to strategize. I like to war game. And uh, this is what I've come up with. I hope you appreciate it. Uh, it took me a little bit of time to do it, and I think it's worth value. All right, let's start with the sit rep. So right now, as it stands, Citadel is in its final stages of planning for the infinity squeeze. They're getting all their ducks in a row to strike to make sure this thing doesn't happen the way we want it to. Uh, and they're doing this by coordinating with their industry partners, other hedge funds, banks, um, vendors and, and anyone that's mission critical for them, okay? The largest shareholders are in the United States, but that doesn't mean that the shareholders overseas in Japan and, and Scotland and Ireland and Germany and, and Canada and all those other places are not going to get the, uh, you know, the business from, from the enemy. They are. So what they're doing right now is they're mission critical partners that are around globally. They're working with them. They're partnering with them, right? They want to make sure that everything goes according to their plan and there's nothing we can do about it. We have to let them do what they have to do. It's just that simple. Now, this is an extinction level event, right? So in terms of the individual enemy employee, they're in a state of complete panic. There's fear, there's anxiety, there's this deep depression. The morale is very low and it's gonna affect them during the squeeze. The, psych uh, the psychiatry um, will, will tell you that when people are in a state of fear and anxiety and the depression kicks in, they're going to make mistakes. It is just a matter of time. They will make a mistake either in the coding or some kind of computer error or some kind of judgmental error. And you're going to see 
uh, that playing to our advantage. We don't have to do anything. We just need to watch them basically go down in flames, believe it or not. But they are coordinating, right, with past security heads from the SEC, uh, influential financial leaders, the Bernankes of this world, the, the, the whoever, uh, former Goldman Sachs CEOs, whoever. These financial leaders are going to be the ones that advocate for a bailout for them or grace from the government or DTC or whoever else, right? They're going to meet with their clients, their lenders, and anyone that's a business stakeholder as a contingency. And they're doing that now. And they're letting them know this is about to happen if they haven't done already. Uh, and they should be prepared for it. Uh, are they going to cut off and uh, allow the, you know, or just stop the denial of, uh, you know, money going to their clients, their, 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 um, the redemption period? I don't know. It's hard to say, but anything's possible. These guys did it in no way they could do it again. So let's not, you know, we, we can't speculate on it. But I do expect them to use deliberate stall techniques and stall and time buying events uh, that are carefully being mapped out, whatever those things might be. Nobody knows really. We just know that it's coming. We just don't know how, in what form. We can expect anything to do with the market that is kind of wonky, that adversely affects us, or just questions the manner in which this whole thing is done. As a saw technique, it is a staged event. It is something that is planned out and something that they're doing. Okay, now their biggest thing, right, in my opinion, is managing their risk exposure, right? They are coming up with numbers. They're having everybody stand by. They're doing all the due diligence. They're getting the lawyers lined up. They're getting the marketing team lined up. So, uh, and, and the FUD factory on standby. Why? Because they want as much FUD going out during the squeeze so people don't FOMO by. Remember that? And that's where you, if you want to, you know, tell all your friends and family, hey, but quickly buy in, you should. If you want to go to, uh, you know, other, you know, not, I mean, of course, this isn't financial advice, but if you wanted to go to, let's say, a Facebook or a Twitter or another handle and, you know, whatever, uh, another social media platform and tell everybody that this is happening and everyone should jump in, you have the right to do that, of course, because you have freedom of speech. That's just my opinion on there. But for retail investors, we're looking good. We are looking very good. Um, we'll be looking better in a, in a few weeks, but you know, it is what it is right now. In reality, the bleeding has increased, right? The steady flow of blood is starting to pick up and I'm going to be honest with you. I think this thing is going to take a few, few months. I think if we start now in this month and it's going to go into December, January and February, I think that's, I, I know it's not what you want to hear, but I'm just being frank with you, but I'm telling you by January, February, this thing is going to be in the thousands, the tens of thousands, maybe in the hundreds of thousands, depending on how fast we can move this thing. Uh, it moves. Um, so I don't want to be that person that you hate, but I just want to be honest with you. This is what I think. Um, and I think it's going to go into next year. And I think the amount of money that we're going to get in February, January timeframe will make up for any inconvenience that for a, uh, a shitty holiday. I mean, for lack of a better phrase, yeah, it's going to be a shitty Christmas. It's going to be a shitty new year. You're going to be tight with your money. And that's okay because when this thing starts to really take off, my goodness, you will never have to worry about another bad holiday ever again. And it's going to be great for you. Don't worry about that. Um, with this expectation um, that during this whole thing, this, 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 this process that we're going to go through, that you're going to fold somewhere in that timeline before the, the squeeze starts, during the squeeze, in the middle of the squeeze, or at the very end of the squeeze, which we're going to discuss a little later. Okay. Um, so that's what's going on right now in our world uh, against the enemy and us. They're planning. They're doing everything they need to do. They're, they're, they're getting their lawyers. They're getting their people lined up. And it is a heinous place to work right now. I promise you it is toxic right now. Nothing's leaked out. But if things are going to start leaking very soon. And people, people talk. People talk. And eventually things get out. And everyone's uh, on standby. And uh, it is what it is. And that's okay. All right, let's talk about institutional investors. All right, this is the salute report for institutions, all right? There's 381 of them, right? We don't know who is who. We don't know who's friendly and who's foe. We do know that it's composed of banks, hedge funds, insurance companies, investment advisory groups, pension funds, private equity, company uh, holding companies, corporations, governments, if you can imagine, trusts, brokerages, and of course, sovereign wealth funds, which is really interesting. I didn't really picture them, but they were in the mix in the, uh, the, 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 the Bloomberg report. By the way, all my data sources are coming directly from Bloomberg. Uh, I'm not making any of these names up. I don't know any, you know, these people are 
these companies are actually real. Uh, their activities are, these are all the sellers. And that's what they're going to be doing during the squeeze with us. Um, we don't know who's working for who, what their magic number is, but we know that we'll see them in the mix. And we know that they're going to sell at one point. They're where they located. They're all over the world. There's France, Sweden, you name it. It's everywhere. These guys are everywhere. Who do they work for? Most of them um, are individual institutional portfolios. They're companies that they represent themselves. Uh, they have their stakeholders, their shareholders. We don't know who those people are, though, you know, but we do know some of them, maybe all of them, who knows, are Citadel, Conf Citadel Confederates, enemies. Now, this enemy has got a relationship or a promise that was made by, um, I'm sorry, this institutions were made promises, you know, by Citadel and the enemy uh, for whatever it is, you know, maybe it's IT coding, maybe the currency isn't really currency, it's not money. It's technology, it's, it's, it's coding, it's algorithms. Nobody knows that. <laughs> but they are armed, they are equipped, they got fast computers, they get support from Citadel and any other shorting uh, hedge funds, the enemy, of course, and they have margin and they have all the things they need to make our squeeze very miserable. And I want you to be aware of that. So how is this gonna work out? How does the actual squeeze happen and what's Citadel gonna be doing? Very simple, I'm gonna give you a graph, right? This is it. This is Citadel, the enemy, and we're going to also lump in all the 25, 50 other hedge funds that are shorting AMC and GME in this, right? So they use strategic covert communications, right? That means phone apps, Signal, ProtonMail, WhatsApp. Uh, they're so conniving and devious. They use dating websites like Plenty of Fish. I've seen guys, I've heard of guys rather, uh, using Grindr, downloading Grindr, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a gay messaging app for gay guys and gay men. Uh, and they message each other in different firms. They find each other's screen names. They locate each other in the same towns, same, same wherevers, and they find each other and they keep communications that way. And of course, if the SEC raids or the FBI raids the place and they're going to look for signal, proton mail, emails, faxes, but they're not going to look in the dating app sites. It's going to be considered intrusive. But in those dating app sites like Grindr or Plenty of Fish or or, or whatever, you know, uh, Tinder, there's gonna be communications. It's layered and I'm telling you, it's, that's how they do it. Uh, I know this because during a political campaign I worked in on, uh, we knew that our phones were compromised. So somebody came up with this bright idea of downloading Grindr for all the phones and we communicated that way. So this is something that people are going to be doing. It's innocuous. Um, there's these messenger apps that are just very plain and plain and whatever. Uh, and they could be sending encoded messages. Nobody knows. They could have uh, a knee, uh, what is it, the Enigma book for, for each one. Nobody knows. But what we do know, and I've, I've laid out the ones that are friendlies. The um, ones in green are all friendly hedge funds to Ken Griffin and Citadel and, and whoever else. That's why they're connected, right? So when the timing's right, these guys give orders. Citadel gives orders. And they'd say to this person, sell at this time, sell at that time, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. And the New York Stock Exchange is complicit in all this. Okay, they're going to be complicit uh, in all this. And, and the decisions that are be, going to be made are going to be made by this group right here. The head of trading, wherever that is, the director, the chief of the chief strategist of the squeeze, the guy that's going to orchestrate everything, the coordinators, the guy that's calling up all the funds, the banks, you know, whoever, uh, institutions, you name it, all the friendlies for them, the chief risk officer, which we talked about, chief investment officer, and of course, the devil himself, Ken. OK, this is how it's all going to work out. This is how they're going to map it out. This is how they're going to strategically uh, bring the short squeeze down to a, a, a dribble, really. And we're not going to let that happen because I have a strategy for that as well. Um, but this is how take a look. You know, they're connected to all these institutions and organizations. They've worked together. They're colleagues. A lot of them went to the same school. When I, you know, when I go on LinkedIn, I see some of the people that work for them. I see familiar faces. Uh, and I see people that are, uh, you know, really smart and, and really well connected, uh, great resumes, great families and stuff. They're all connected and they're all corrupt. And that's what it comes down to. These people are, like I said, an this is an extinction level event. They're going to do everything in their power not to get caught, but they're going to do everything in their power to win. Okay. To win. This is their livelihoods. This is their pride. This is their, 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 their entire lives here. And if you, you lose, you lose. That's it. Let me lay out the uh, the relationships here. 
here's Ken in the middle, right? Here's the New York Stock Exchange, and that's Jeffrey. Jeffrey is the CEO and president. Uh, I think as a, it might be Cunningham right now, but he owns this. He owns the New York Stock Exchange. So what's his connection to Ken Griffin? Ken Griffin paid millions of dollars to uh, various political uh, uh, various political organizations, PACs, to his wife right here, the former senator, or the, the, I don't know if she was a senator or not, but she made it up, but he donated a ton of money to her. And she is the husband, she's the wife of this chap, Jeffrey, the head of the New York Stock Exchange. I think is his last name. Of course, there's Mike Pence and whatnot, but they're all in bed with each other. And there will be fuckery, in my opinion, from New York Stock Exchange. So they'll absolutely be there. And of course, Kenny's best buddy, Mr. Stevie Cohen of SAC Capital now, uh, 0.72 out of Stanford. Uh, and of course, all the other small hedge funds that are out there. Let me explain to you how hedge funds work and how they're like, a, there's, there's a plant called Mother of a Thousand. Okay, Mother of a Thousand, it's a plant. This one plant does something very unique. Uh, you put it somewhere, you water it, you grow it, and it reproduces without having to, it, it, in other words, it grows and it takes away some of its spawn, it cuts it off and it allows it to grow on its own. So it has this, 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 uh, pollinating uh the world type thing where you know <laughs> it's like it's growing little seeds and it does it by itself and it pull, you know just makes a million of these other plants all the same variety and that's exactly how hedge funds work so let's say i work for citadel right i work for five years for citadel i make ken a shit ton of money a bunch of money i finally say to ken ken hey it's my time to go man i'm going to start my own fund so of course ken gives me the blessing gives me the a-okay -okay, and what does he do? He gives me my first nut. He gives me a billion dollars. He goes, hey, start with my money first. And he gives me a billion dollars. And that gives me my first, you know, because I'm only, only going to walk out with $20, $30 million working for Ken over the five, five, 10 years, depending on bonuses and how well I perform. But Ken's going to give me a billion dollars. And what that means is he gets first access to any of my plays. And he gets access to all, my, all the shit that I do. And he's going to see it and he's going to oversee it. And I'm going to be friends with him. And that's why uh, that's why these leagues are there. These are all funds that Ken has spawned, uh, whether it be Gabe Plotkins or, or whoever. These hedge funds are all incestuous. They all are sleeping with each other. They're all buddies. They are doing this together. It's a coordinated effort. And when you work for Ken, you never really stop working for Ken. You leave, but he, you, he's going to give you a billion dollars you're going to play with. You're going to make more money for him. You're gonna make a little for yourself and you will do that for X amount of years until you are completely out of his pocket. And that's it, either you lose all of his fucking money, one or the other. Okay, next. Time execution of strategic sales. This is why the meat and potatoes there. Let's pretend it's 12, 11, 21, okay? And squeeze has started and we are, let's say at $1,000 or $10,000 or whatever. This is how it's going to work. They're going to signal their friends to sell at certain times and certain price tags. Okay. If you look on this the way, I've got it structured. <coughs> Excuse me. You'll see that I've got time frames. You know, two million two million shares drop at a strike price of fourteen thousand. Drop a hundred thousand shares at this price, and who is it? It's Renaissance Tech, Jim Jim Simons, or Wolverine, or whoever. They get these marching orders. They send texts through that, that messenger app, and then they start doing it. They start coordinating their efforts. This is how they're gonna do it, right? They reach a certain strike price, 20,000, drop 200K, drop 100K, drop this, drop that, uh, and make that price go down. And remember, it's to create a frenzy drop, right? That's what they wanna do. They wanna create a frenzy drop, and it would be coming at random times and random price strikes. We don't know, I'm just using these as an example, but nobody knows when they're actually gonna happen or what prices. But the New York Stock Exchange, our friend Jeff Sprecher, um, they're gonna be halting trading. We can expect that. Maybe two days, the max they can do is 30 days. Uh, this is to quell volatility. I'm not making this up. They can delay the squeeze just by, just, you know, by holding on, just by hitting the pause button and hoping some of us ex exit the strategy. And the data that they're gonna be published is complete bullshit, right? I think we've talked about that. They'll publish fake sell-offs and all this other stuff and it's creating quote, massive volume of sell-offs, but it's fake. It's there directly and explicitly to make you sell, to make you panic sell. All of a sudden you're gonna see 
a hundred thousand shares being thrown away. No, no, it's, no, it's such bullshit. It's to freak you out and it's all coordinated. So these strategies are, are more or less condensed versions of the rinse and repeat. The ones we talked about in the other video, they work by dramatic drops, causing us, the individual retail investor, to induce stress, trade trauma, forcing retail to close. I can't handle this emotional roller coaster anymore. I got to go. I'm done with it. Okay. And this is all determined by actual sell volume, the sentiment on social media, and other chart factors. They're earmarks and milestones. So they're going to be creeping. Their AI is going to be watching over Reddit, going to be watching over Twitter and Facebook and anywhere else that we're talked about. And they're going to gain a competitive edge by knowing what we're thinking. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. The sentiment on social media, okay? But once they drop the price, they will immediately drop a trading halt. So if it goes from $30,000 a share to all of a sudden 15,000, they're going to put a trading halt in place. They're gonna take it away or they're gonna have some kind of treacherous thing that they're gonna do in hopes that you're going to close your position. I would advise myself, of course, me being a smart ape, smart retail investor, that I not do that. I am not going to drop and uh, one fucking share. I won't drop it. I will not sell one share. They can try whatever they want. They can do whatever they want, whatever they please. I'm not going anywhere. I will be here till the end of time, like, like, like Apocalypse from the X-Men movies. I watched that movie last night. I'm going to be here. I am eternal. I'm going to stay until I reach my number. And I think a lot of people will as well. I think we're building confidence. I think we're getting motivated and understanding how the game works. And now that we're empowered, now that we see what the game is, how it hasn't changed in the last 10 months, there's just going to be more stop and go, stop and go, dramatic drops. Uh, I think we're all going to be like, okay, we've, we've, sung, we've done this already. We've already seen this. Uh, we'll just hang out and chill. We're going to hang out. You know, we're not scared of this. We're not afraid of you. And we're going to hang out. And that's it. We're not going to do shit. We're not going to leave. That is how this is going to happen. Coordinated strategic strikes, strategic drops with all kinds of bad actors, all these guys, political actors, you know, the Mitch McConnells, the, 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 the you know, the Yellens, the, 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 the Gary Genslers, they're all going to be involved in this thing. The Bidens, they're all going to be involved in this thing. And I'm telling you, uh, you need to be prepared for it. Everything that they say is just considered FUD, and that's the way you should look at it. All FUD, they can't do anything. They will try to scare you out of your position, and that's what should be expected. Remember that. They're going to try to scare you out of your position. All you have to do, it doesn't cost you anything, hold. Hold. They cannot remove you. It's illegal. They can't say, oh, we're just going to make you, we're just going to, you know, sell it all at $400. It's the most you can get. Uh 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 uh. Nope, can't do that either. It's illegal, you know. And then they, we, I mean, the, I mean, then you realize the market is rigged, and then mass exodus, right? Everyone would be leaving after that. They're not going to do that, not for Ken Griffin at least. They're not. People are going to keep an eye on him and him, and people from this office, the president's office, are going to be keeping an eye on all of it. I promise you. Once that first wave of volatility hits, we are going to see presidential you know, gubernatorial, whatever, any, we're, we're going to see government, local government, state government kind of appear in and see what the hell's going on. They'll make comments and they'll say X, Y, and Z. And let me tell you, systemic risk is going to be their chant. Well, they should have thought of that before they put these assholes in place to run this thing, because I don't care. I don't care if it burns to the ground. I really don't, but I'm holding. And you should too. We're going to make money on this. We're going to make an exorbitant amount of money. We're going to make so much money that you won't even know what to do with it. But I'm telling you right now, this is the way to go. This is the way, holding. Now, in the beginning of this message, I spoke to you uh, about this, Masada. All right, I want to talk to you about this. Masada is this fortress that was built by King Herod. Um, I guess most of you guys might remember King Herod from the, the Bible story, the Jesus story, um, how he uh, tried to kill a bunch of infants and stuff, whatnot. But he made this. This was a summer home for him. But it ended up being a fortification for these people, uh, Jewish rebels during the first Roman occupation, uh, the Roman occupation called Sakari. Now, I'm sure a couple of you guys remember a movie that came out a couple of years ago called uh, Sakari and, and, and uh, Sakarius or Sicario. 
Um, and it means in Hebrew, assassin. So this is an assassin's lair. And the Romans built this up here. They built all this. It was just a regular fortress, didn't have any hills, but the Romans built it up so they can charge up here and kill all the Jews that were up there. Let me tell you, they were not going to go like the way that people thought. They were, what the Romans were going to do was kill each and every one of them, right? Make them slaves, human captivity, all that stuff. But those, 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 Masa, the, those Sakari warriors, those Jews that lived up there, what they did is they committed suicide. Right? Theologically, it's wrong in, in Hebrew, uh, Judaism, but they killed them because they didn't want to get taken. They didn't want to die in captivity, have their wives raped and murdered and pillaged and stuff, right? So they, they, they killed themselves. And it was a mass suicide. And it's, it's something that Israeli officers have to climb up. I don't know if you can see this road right here. They have to climb up this road and go all the way back up here and climb to this mountain and make it to this mountain. It's, a, it's, a, it's crazy. It's a hard hike and you have full gear on. Why am I telling you this story? Either the apes and the retail investor community or the enemies, Citadel and the hedge funds, are going to have a Masada moment. One of us is going to die up on this mountain. And it's all determined on if you want to hold or not. Do you want to hold? Do you want to save you know, your family from generational poverty by holding? If you do, then they will die. If you want a paper hand and fold out early, then it's all over. You're, you're, you deserve what you get. But if we can force the enemy, the Citadel, the SIGs into that one area, we will bleed them dry. And there'll be nothing left and they will be forced to die out here. They will bleed to death and it will be their form of suicide. We are going to win. We are going to win. All we have to do is hold, which doesn't cost us anything. These guys have to spend money and that money is coming to an end. They're bleeding heavily, right? So the question is, who do you want to die up on that mountain? The apes or the hedge funds? That's a question I want you to really think about. Give some thought up there because I'm not dying up on that mountain. I'll let them die for their, their cause, but I'm not dying for this. I'm telling you right now, all we have to do is hold, hold, and hold. And eventually, these guys are going to die. And we're going to get up to the top of the mountain, and we will conquer that mountain together. Apes united as one. Retail united as one. If you found value in this video, please share it with your community. I'm Al from Boston, and I'm signing out.